If you've spent any time around color grading, you've probably heard of color management, like ACES and other systems. But many people don't understand it, and I've seen too many projects suffer very real consequences due to confusion around this subject. As an example, years ago I was working on a feature-length film where a post-production artist didn't understand the concepts, and it actually caused three weeks of delays due to the visual effects needing to be reworked. If you're an editor or a cinematographer, VFX artist, or anyone who really deals with the visual pipeline, don't let that person be you. Even though this is a complex subject, in this video you're going to gain a strong understanding of what color management is, why we use it, and how it improves our lives on a project. In its simplest form, color management is attempting to give us a standard way to transform what our camera sees into what our screens can reproduce. And this is important because there are a bunch of different ways that people can see our work. There are iPads, theater projectors, smart TVs, and more, and all of them have their own limitations in what can be displayed. If we were to go outside, which I would never do, we get to experience the world with our eyes being the primary limiting factor. And the visual limits of our perception are often mapped to a horseshoe shape, which you've probably seen before. While our eyes can experience these colors in all of their saturated goodness, Cameras and screens don't yet have the same capability of capturing and reproducing all of these colors. To be fair, cameras and screens are getting better all the time, which is awesome. But we need a way of representing the limits of these devices. This brings us to the idea of a color space. I want you to think of a color space as a way we specify the purest red, green, or blue that a device can either capture or reproduce. When we know these points, they form a nice triangle, which can predict what a given device, like a monitor, is capable of reproducing. For example, if you have a monitor that can reproduce a Rec. 709 color space, you know that any value within the Rec. 709 triangle can be reproduced, but a value outside of it will be problematic. Let's say we have this footage which was captured by an Aerie camera. This footage was shot on Aerie's log profile, which captures a bunch of information, more than what a normal screen can reproduce. If we just leave it as it is right now, it looks very flat and low contrast to us. But to see a normalized image, we can take Aerie's known color space and transform it to what our monitor is expecting. This is color management, the standard transformation of what our cameras can see to what our displays can reproduce. And this is a big deal because it's far more efficient and accurate than doing it by hand. Our eyes are not the most reliable instruments, which you know if you've watched my videos on color theory. Let's start putting this into practice with a very basic form of color management. So here we have some Aerie 35 footage and we want to normalize it from its log state to something that targets our monitor so we have that normalized image. Well, the good news in Resolve is we can just add a node and all of that math is captured within the color space transform tool. So we're gonna tell it the, uh, the correct inputs. So this is Aerie wide gamut four, Aerie log C4, and then the output we want is Rec. 709 gamma 2.4. And would you look at that? We have a normalized image. We go from uh, Aries flat into our normalized Rec. 709 image. And if we select the other clips in our timeline and give a little middle click here, we can copy and paste that transformation so that it works across all the clips. Now this obviously isn't the end of all the creative things we can do uh, upstream of this. So to the left of that adjustment, we can start adding, you know, some of the look of the film. You know, maybe we're going to add some more contrast. Maybe there's going to be some sort of split toning where we, you know, warm the highs, cool the shadows. That's a little extreme there, but you, you get the idea. We can start working upstream of that color management, but we run into an issue. And that is, do you see this little clip here on the end? Look at how whacked out it is. This was actually a clip that was Rec. 709. It was standardized or normalized before the transformation ever hit it. So it doesn't look right when we send it through this color management. One way to address this would be to fix the math that's going on between the input and the output color space. So we could tell it, hey, this was a Rec. 709 clip coming in and uh, you basically shouldn't do anything. So if I kind of enable it, you'll see that nothing's happening as I enable or disable this. As great as this is, we run into a problem. The problem here is that our controls will operate differently on the Rec. 709 clip compared to the Aerie log footage. So if I have an adjustment that I really like, there's no clean way to use it across all the clips. Wouldn't it be nice if there was a way to transform all these clips, regardless of the capture device, to a standard format so that our adjustments can happen in a predictable and repeatable way? 
Well, congratulations, because you have just discovered the intermediate color space. You've probably heard about ACES and DaVinci Wide Gamut, which are both systems aiming to solve this issue. ACES has been around for a while now, but we've seen some issues arise with its current form. So if the option is available, many colorists do prefer working in DaVinci Wide Gamut for the moment. Let's see how this works. The way we make this happen is by setting up a little bit of a sandwich. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our airy footage and transform it into DaVinci Wide Gamut. So you'll see we already have our input set up correctly. We're just gonna adjust the output to DaVinci Wide Gamut, and we don't need any tone mapping for this. And then at the very end of all the work we do, right, so we can do a bunch of color work in here because this is our working or intermediate color space, we'll grab another color space transform. And actually, I have this uh, already saved over here. We're gonna go from DaVinci Wide Gamut into Rec. 709. I'm just going to enable luminance mapping here. For uh, organization's sake, I can probably rename this opening one to Airy, you know, DWG, to let me know that I'm going from Airy to DaVinci Wide Gamut. Now, all the adjustments we make in here are going to happen in that intermediate color space. Let me paste those adjustments to the rest of the clips. All right, so our first three clips have that, and now our last clip has that. But because we have a different input device, we need to adjust the input color space. So we're going to let it know that we want Rec. 709 gamma 2.4. Now, the adjustments that we make between these two nodes, regardless of the input format, will happen in a more predictable way. In ACES, we sometimes call this the IDT and the ODT, the input device transform and output device transform. In other words, with the IDT, we're specifying what is our input device. So in this case, it's the airy log footage or, you know, it's Rec. 709. This allows it to accurately transform it to our intermediate space. And then the ODT is saying, after all of our color work is done, what kind of display do we want to view this on? This is a huge quality of life improvement because with this intermediate working space, our controls now operate in a familiar way regardless of the source material. And as we make adjustments, it's possible for them to be copied and pasted between the clips and camera types in a clean way. So what questions do you have? I realize that we stepped through a bunch of information in a short period of time. Let me know down in the comments. Also, there are a number of different ways to set up a color managed workflow. Be sure to let me know if you want a more in-depth video for setting up yourself for success on your own projects. There are some common pitfalls that can really mess you up if you don't know what you're doing. If this video helped you, hitting the like button will help get the word out and subscribe to keep seeing more content like this. All right, I'll see you in the next one.